What if audio routing was easier? What if it involved less wiring, less setup? What if it got out of your way, both technologically and physically? The Beacon Mix and Mix Create aim to take all of that mess and complexity and leave you with a tiny device that just needs one cable, but all of the functionality. That isn't up to the task. I'm going on a quest to build the most simple streaming audio workflow that doesn't sacrifice on any of the features. This quest will not be for the faint of heart. We're fighting spaghetti monsters. We're bleeding our high frequencies. And we're enumerating our audio devices. This is the, the Mixer Mi Menagerie. I'm Maples Vox, the stream professor, and the team that made the Go XLR formed their own company, Beacon, and released three products today. The Mix, the Mix Create, and the Mic. The Mic gets its own video that's probably up on my channel right now, so be sure to watch that after this one. What are these tiny little things? They look like toys. Are they really audio mixers? Well, no, actually. Mix might be in the name, but the Beacon Mix and Mix Create are audio controllers, not actual mixers. The difference is obvious when we transition from looking at the beautifully simple front of the devices with their knobs, buttons, and LCD display to the back, where there's just a single USB Type-C port. Long USB-C to A cables are included in the box for both devices. But that's it. Only USB, no audio jacks. How does that make sense? The entire premise of the Beacon products are to be simple. The Mix and Mix Create are designed to enhance your audio workflow while you bring your own audio gear. Doesn't matter what microphone, audio interface, mixer, whatever you use, these little devices are supposed to be your control dials for it all. I don't want to use an XLR mic. Ugh. But I already have an audio interface. Why can't they just release the software without making me buy something else? I see the same cries every audio product release. The same people stoked for new features being developed that enhance their streaming workflow, but frustrated that it feels like a never-ending upgrade cycle to make it work. And then you have people like me complaining in every review that products don't have speaker output. Let me use it with more complicated setups. Well, no more! Says Bacon, sorry, Beacon. Let's say you already have a streaming audio setup you like. A nice USB mic recommended by your favorite streaming professor, such as the HyperX Quadcast, or maybe the Shure MV7 with the SM7B's windscreen. Your mic is fine. You have no interest in swapping to an XLR interface, but you want the ability to separate out your music, your voice chat, and your system sound to different audio tracks to be at different volumes for you and for your stream, or maybe to selectively only record certain tracks. The Mix Create is perfect for this. Much like the Go XLR or Elgato Wave devices, it adds a few virtual audio devices to your system to map your programs to, which is much simpler to do in Windows 11 than Windows 10, by the way, or can be improved with the Ear Trumpet app linked below. And then you can manage your volume differently for your stream and for yourself via submixes and have quick control of your levels and muting right at your fingertips. Unlike the GoXLR or Wave, the Mix and Mix Create don't require Beacon's microphone to use. You can add any audio input from any company or connection type to the microphone device channel. It won't add post-processing or anything to the device, but it can hook pretty much anything as your microphone or output devices. You can also add additional devices that exist on your system alongside virtual ones. Whatever you have, the Mix Create can manage. Though with pre-release software, I did trigger some DPC watchdog blue screens on my main system with a driver conflict, but that's since hopefully gone away and probably being worked on. For some, controlling your levels with knobs rather than sliders, for like the Go XLR, is more desirable due to the much smaller footprint they take up. This is the smallest multi-control surface for audio I've seen come across my desk thus far. But the knobs mean it's even more difficult to blindly reach over and know exactly where your levels are and adjust them. And honestly, the knobs don't feel amazing. They're kind of loose and wobbly when, when, when pressing in the knobs, you, you, you're guaranteed to change your levels a tiny bit. But the sensitivity and accuracy being read while they turn is pretty great, so any accidental change will be like a sing, single volume level, which doesn't really matter that much. I wish they were tighter and provided haptic feedback of some sort, but I got used to it. Let's go simpler. What if you only want to stream at a super casual level or you don't stream at all? Maybe the idea of just having greater control over your system sound is appealing. 
That's where the bass beacon mix device comes in. It's the most basic and simplest sound controller workflow for Windows. It doesn't add any virtual audio devices and instead lets you drag and drop individual Windows applications listings to the device. You control the volume levels of individual programs rather than devices. If you don't need multiple separate audio tracks or submixes for content creation, this workflow is fairly similar, just easier. The mix lacks the mute buttons and page switching of the create, but physically, they're otherwise the same device, which is why I feel having both is kind of pointless, not just as a user, but for Beacon re releasing them. I understand the desire to offer the simplest product possible, but the mix and create are separated purely by a software key rather than capabilities for the most part, and the product segmentation going on with feature sets to make them not eat into each other gets kind of absurd. IMO, they should have just launched one product priced between these two with the ability to add both audio devices and programs to the d different knobs. Make it so you only add the virtual devices to Windows when you want them, so users can either have a simple controller workflow or a submix workflow and an easy win. As it stands, I feel that the mix is only useful for non-content creators, and its only purpose as a creator would be to accompany another device. This is made worse by the fact that the Beacon mic actually comes with the full Mix Create mixing suite. So while the mix can act as a physical controller for the mic's devices, it downgrades the overall capabilities by way of not having submixes or finer control over the device, such as the separate voice chat mic device or knob paging and etc. The functionality and limitations of the basic mix are familiar and have me reevaluating the PC panel products again. I originally picked up the PC panel pro from the original wave at the end of 2020 and received it last spring, but quickly decided that even for my basic in-house gaming workflow, it was kind of useless. I liked the concepts, but I was never going to develop muscle memory to remember the knobs and the buttons. And it just, it, it felt like it was halfway towards too many things. The sliders make up for the lack of screen when it comes to volume levels compared to the mix. However, if you have a PC panel already, a label maker or some masking tape and a Sharpie would be much cheaper than upgrading to the mix. The PC panel also lets you control OBS or run general hotkeys or control windows, more stream deck or loop deck like functionality than just controlling your audio as well. So choosing between them comes down to your needs and what other tools you already have, you know, available or plan on buying. I feel the mix could pair well to expand the GoXLR or Elgato Wave or some other audio interface, but it does not stand on its own. What does stand on its own is backing track. Backing track is rock and metal music that you'd want to jam on in your car as much as your stream without needing to separate audio tracks and keep it off of Twitch. Backing track is royalty free, stream safe, video and podcast safe, and free for you to stream at backingtrack.gg or download in our Discord server, and our growing library of kick ass music won't disappoint. Rock out your stream today. Yeah! Hello, the streaming bro. Hello, the streaming bro. Let's look at one more use case, expanding an existing mixer setup, such as with the GoXLR, or in my case, the Soundcraft Signature 12 MTK. Right before the GoXLR released, I bought this bad boy, a big $500 mixer that was, at the time, the only option below $1,000 that gave me multiple audio devices in Windows that I could route programs through and separate my audio tracks, while also offering me physical I.O. for connecting multiple PCs 
etc. I currently have it paired with my PreSonus IO24 audio interface. The IO24 runs my primary mic, while my mixer runs my secondary mic and connects up to multiple PCs and so on that I have at my desk, and outputs to my speakers and headphones, all of that. It's still a messy spaghetti monster, but it does the job well. The only problem is that I've, as I've expanded my usage of the physical ports on the board, I'm now out of devices to map my USB audio to to separate tracks and submixes. In your case, you might similarly have the GoXLR or GoXLR Mini, or perhaps bought a more standard USB mixer that doesn't give you multiple audio tracks in the first place. How can you route audio to it through the different tracks without buying a bunch of sound cards or running it all through voice meter? <laughs> The Mix Create expands this by letting us add a bunch of virtual audio devices to our system, route programs to them, manage submixes for headphones, stream, and so on, while still taking in and outputting to the mixer, if desired. So my physical workflow can be left identically, but now I can route additional virtual audio devices to my normal headphone and speaker mixes just fine. The Mix Create is probably staying on my desk permanently now. The normal mix will just stay on my gaming computer or something. The Mix and Mix Create definitely have their limitations. Don't get me wrong, I'm going to cover some general specific quirks and then talk about the general stability and bigger problems I've had. Let's start with the Mix, since I've already mostly aired my grievances with it. The Mix is entirely dependent on Windows' volume management, or for whatever reason, the Windows volume curve is kinda crash, and differences between volume numbers is minimal, and there can be scenarios where one is too loud, and then obviously zero is nothing. This isn't the Mix's fault. But this isn't a problem for the Mix Create managing its own audio device. The Mix is limited to controlling four knobs at once, meaning if you want to manage the volume of more than four programs at the same time, you need to either group them up under the same knob or buy another mix. The base mix does not allow for submixes at all, other than the toggleable swap between the two output devices. The Mix Create, on the other hand, lacks the easy drag and drop support that the Mix has. You also can't rename knob pages which is a really dumb limitation given that the mix can. Currently, there's only two submixes supported on the Mix Create, which kind of feels like a silly limitation given that it just seems to generate them endlessly. You should be able to just route them on your own, I think. I would love for Beacon to develop an OBS plugin integration or work with it once the WebSockets ships by default in OBS so that you can display your OBS stats, your Twitch or YouTube viewership numbers or something else on the screen. Both devices feel like they don't really take advantage of their screens. For the most part, you get the same functionality, probably cheaper, with a few small sliders. A lot of the screen space is wasted, and information isn't always conveyed clearly. It's not easy to recognize which submix you're currently adjusting, for example. Also, while clicking in the knobs on the mix mutes the pages, the mix create has dedicated mute buttons, and thus single clicks of the knobs don't even do anything. Being able to use some of this extra functionality for additional PC or stream control would be very nice. You also can't change which mute mode you're using for the Mix Create without opening the software either. Again, a silly limitation for a device that's supposed to be the controller, I think. You can't switch profiles on the device itself, you have to go through the software, which feels silly. Going back to the screens, there's no option for screen savers or turning off the display. The burn-in, or at least losing brightness over time, like I mentioned with my OG Stream Decks doing, is still a concern. Apparently this has been an issue after six months of use of many beta testers. With my PC, I lock it when I'm away, which allows the screen to turn off and the Mix Create turns off as a result, but if you leave your PC on without sleeping or locking, it will stay on. Always. The screens aren't touch screens, which is fine, but might look like they should be. Skins for the UI are planned and a priority post-launch, but they're currently unavailable. I would love if an easy community skin capability was developed, but I'm not sure if this will be the case. Some users have reported inconsistencies with mute and volume status being imported across devices when using both the Mix and the Mix Create on the same PC, especially with the mic involved. And then there's the whole software thing. You may have seen me discuss this already on Discord or Twitter, but I honestly have not had enough time to really test and utilize these devices yet. While the beta testers have had theirs for six months now, I will have had mine for two weeks with the software to actually run them for less than a week at the time this video gets published. Beacon has been really struggling to get the software finished and polished up before launch. So I'm still working with pre-release software that has been changing as I go. And I've basically been playing hot potato with bugs that I encounter and they fix and rather than waste your time listing a bunch of bugs that you probably won't encounter, I will just say to, I guess, be prepared for the software to grow and evolve and to get some polish over time. If you buy this on day one, it's not finished. It's not ready. 
Specifically, my biggest nightmare has, has seemed to be a conflict with either my AMD Threadripper 3000 system specifically, or the USB audio devices from my Soundcraft mixer. So I'm gonna be kind of optimistic and say that I fixed my AMD issues and that it was in fact the AMD USB chipsets that were to blame because I installed a Sonnet Allegro super high-end USB PCIe card in my system and I've been running the mix and the create or the mix create and the mic on and off, playing audio through my speakers and everything, and it seems to be working fine now. I haven't given it enough time to be certain, but if I include this in the video, I guess that was the fix. Frustrating. Hopefully they can work out their issues with AMD, but I'm glad I got it resolved at least. I do have one big disappointment with both of these products. Neither of them have any sort of audio output jack. Yes, the whole point is to be an extension of whatever audio system you already have or want to build, but in chasing that simplicity, they potentially make everyone's lives more difficult in terms of audio output routing. Given that they put such a high-end headphone amp in the microphone, it is very surprising and disappointing that you don't get jack on either mix device, pun intended. This becomes a bigger and bigger problem if you want to listen to the mic relay through your chosen output device, as it's unusably delayed. Thankfully, the mic, if you use the Beacon mic, has its own monitoring option separate from this that is super low latency, but the mic relay latency is bad. It's not bad in streaming or captures, but monitoring, uh-uh. Also, just as a note for sustainability and repairability, these things are complete paperweights without the software. At best, you get a logo animation, at worst, nothing. They control nothing, display nothing, do nothing. This is a big concern these days, and I can only hope before Beacon shuts down or disbands again at some point in the future, be it two years from now or 20, they open source the drivers and software stack or find some way to make these devices live longer than they otherwise seem like they would. So are the Mix and Mix Create worth $150 and $199? Honestly, it's a tough call. The Mix is the perfect controller device for the Elgato Wave USB mic, the Wave XLR audio interface, or of course, the Beacon mic, or an expansion device for the GoXLR, GoXLR Mini, or other multi-device mixer, but... Eh... The mic itself comes with the full Mix Creates mixing suite, so pairing it with the base mix itself is actually kind of a downgrade in terms of sub submixes and streaming capability, even if it gives you the controls. The Mix Create is great to bring your own mic and output device, but $200 is pricey to have to have everything else already. The PC Panel Mini and Pro are basically half the price of the Mix and Mix Create respectively, while also offering you general hotkey and stream control capability, and while they still work best with a device like the Elgato Wave, with virtual audio devices already, you know, added to your system, it's a far more economical option. Don't get me wrong, if you can pay the price, these are absolutely cool devices. Assuming we can get the driver and blue screen issues worked out, the Mix Create will sit right on top of my audio interface and expand my mixer's capabilities in a huge way, indefinitely. But it's hard to recommend a $200 controller with no physical I.O. or mic effect suite when at the time of writing, it's only like eight more dollars to get yourself a proper Go XLR Mini with basically all the same features and physical I.O., mic processing, etc. I worry that telling you to buy this to make up for the limitations of your existing hardware is an exercise in sunk cost fallacy rather than making the best choice for your situation. I think the Mix offers really cool control for the general PC power user or general streamer who doesn't care about submixes, but I feel like submixes are worth having just in case and working around them regardless. It's a hard call, but hopefully I've helped you figure out your choice. It's not a GoXLR replacement, as everyone kept asking me about on Twitter. Sorry. But if you really care about your stream audio, then you have to watch my ultimate streaming audio guide right here. Wait. go back. You think you can just bring me out for a review and then shove me back in that box? The least you can do is let me live in the LGCX. But no, we'll meet again, Vox. But for now, I've got a float plane to catch. <laughs>